get started here by building an app space for both people and company tab in my CRM. To do so, I'm going to right click on Ratchet X and choose Load the App Space Editor. The App Space Editor loads. Let me quickly point out if you look down here at Ratchet X, it has a pause indicator over the icon. This indicates that Ratchet X is not currently servicing the desktop. It, it won't uh, paint any magic buttons or uh, launch any actions for you because it knows you're currently in uh, developer mode. So to get started, I'll choose File New and create a new app space. I guess I can define an app space. First of all, it's an XML file. And as an XML file, it contains some header information so that you know what the purpose of this app space is, who the publisher is, um, a brief description of it. But the main thing that an app space is, is really a collection of regwins. Now, a regwin is, um, it's short for registered window. That was the original um, abbreviation that it, that it uh, derived from. But a regwin is essentially all the targeting information that RatchetX needs to know in order to find a window on your desktop consistently in different operating systems on, on different desktops and be able to extract data from screen elements and paste data to screen elements. Each one of those is referred to as a regwin. The natural way that this My CRM application breaks down is in multiple regwin. One regwin for the people tab when these fields are available and another regwin for the company tab when these fields are available and so on and so forth for each field. So what makes sense naturally, though it's not necessary, is we're going to build one app space that's going to hold um, a collection of all of the um, regwins for the My CRM sample application. So let's first put our header information on for app space. You'll notice here um, the, we have an explorer that lets you navigate around and uh, manipulate the different um, objects that uh, comprise an app space. So right now I'm at the app space uh, header area, and I'll call this uh, tutorial one. That'll be the name of my app space. Let me just point out that you'll notice a little bit of uh, of uh, naming requirements here. You can't have spaces in the name of a lot of these objects, and um, you can't have duplicate objects uh, with the same name. So you'll notice a little of that here. I'm going to give us a namespace. Obviously, a namespace is helpful to distinguish your app spaces from some other company's app space that may be creating an app space um, given the same app space ID. So let's just call this ratchetsoft.com slash app spaces. That'll do. We have a help URL. I won't bother with that. And then we'll put in the, rub the publisher. And now it gives us the ability to associate an icon with this app space. Sometimes that makes sense. Uh, when you're using an app space to hold a collection of windows that are all part of the same application, as in this example, then it does make sense. The, the most likely uh, value here would be to grab the icon associated with the MyCRM application itself. And I can do that by choosing Select Icon from Window. And then it gives me a list of all the running windows on my desktop, and I can just grab that one and you can see we've grabbed that icon for you that icon will be serialized and stored in this XML file so so remember all of the regwins all of the icons associated with those regwins or with I'm sorry the icons associated with this app space all of this will be stored in one XML file called an app space I'll give it a brief description Okay, and that's all we need for the app space header. Now the real work begins. I'm going to click on Regwin. I'm going to right click and say new. And now we want to begin by creating a new Regwin. The first question it asks me is which of the following best describes your target screen? Really what's going on here is we start with a number of templates. We've predefined based on the type of screens you're integrating, we may have some templates that would get you halfway there. So, for example, if this was an Internet Explorer application, in other words, you know, some website that you're accessing through an Internet Explorer, 
I would select Web Page and Internet Explorer, and that would uh, that would make available a number of conveniences, uh, such as connectors specialized for IE. But in this case, I'm just going to choose the standard Windows application, the default, and I will give it a RegWin ID of People tab. And okay, the App Space Editor is now created a blank RegWin called People tab, and I have to fill in this information. Application is just descriptive, but I'll fill it in, my CRM. Uh, description, let's say People tab selected on my CRM for Windows. Once again, there's a help URL. I'm going to leave that out. Uh, what is important to show here is there's a show button checkbox. And the show button checkbox is asking you that when RatchetX detects this RegWin, do you want it to place the magic button there? Now, you might think to yourself, well, why wouldn't I? Well, sometimes you're building a RegWin that will be the starting point of an action. And if you want to start your action from that RegWin, then, yeah, you're definitely going to want to place the magic button there so that you can click the magic button to, to uh, trigger the, the uh, calling of that action. But in certain types of scenarios, you're building a RegWin that is not going to be the location of a starting point of an action, but it will be visited at some point by some action that's navigating around and clicking tabs and pressing buttons, and it, it may actually... Uh, you may be creating regwins that will never host the magic button themselves. They're just kind of uh, stepping stones in the process of, uh, that, that will be consumed by some action that you're using. Um, in this case, we do want the magic button to be shown, so I will keep this checked. Uh, regwin key, you'll see the value of this later, but this is essentially a unique uh, key that defines this particular regwin. And you'll see it's assembled for you automatically by using the key associated with the app space, which we've defined as people tab. Here, tutorial. Essentially, it's the namespace plus the app space ID. And then if I get back to the RegWin, plus the RegWin ID. Those combined together make up the RegWin key. And, okay, so now the first thing RatchetX needs us to do is to give it some targeting information so that RatchetX can find this window on the user's desktop. Okay, Just find the window. Uh, in Windows, the process name, class name, and title bar text are the attributes of a running application that we have to work with to say, okay, we have found th that running window. Um, so, what we need is, we need to get the process name and class name. We already can see the title bar text here. Well, luckily, you don't have to type this in. You can just click the Find button, and Find will give you our Select a Window dialog box. Uh, this dialog box, in this case, it's showing only um, my CRM sample app. That's all it's showing. Um, but very often, it would be showing others, and you just want to find the window that you're looking for. From time to time, you'll find that the window you're looking for is not available as part of the main modules, in which case you'd uncheck this, click Refresh, and now, hey, now there's a whole bunch of windows that I could see here that are currently running on my Windows desktop because we're including not just main modules, but all Windows modules. I'm going to go back to select main modules only. And I am going to select my CRM sample app. I can either click the select button or double click it. And now what you'll see is that we now have a process name and a class name that were read right from the running application so we know they're right, and a title bar text. Now, one thing that happens very frequently is that the title bar text itself uh, may vary to some degree. So if this can vary, and AppSpace Editor itself is a great example of when it can vary, because here, AppSpace Editor colon, and it includes the name of the app space that you're working on. As we know, that will change when we work on different app spaces. It will have different names. It's very common. So what we support is using wildcards here. So I can say my CRM dot star, but I have to include the checkbox includes regular expressions. Okay. So what this will do is it'll allow it'll search the desktop looking for a process name that's ratchetx.mycrm. 
a class name that matches this, and then title bar text that matches my CRM and then anything that follows after it, wildcarded. Okay, so we've provided the initial targeting information so that RatchetX can target this window. Let me go down and test it, make sure it's currently working. So what I want to scan for is I want to test just for the window. You'll see uh, what the alternatives are in a moment. I'm going to click test. And in five milliseconds, RatchetX was able to scan the Windows desktop and determine that, yes, it was able to find a, a matching window. Let me hit it again, and it's down to zero seconds. It should be very quick, um, this particular type of uh, scan. So that's great. Let me make sure this works by shutting down this window, and then you would assume that I will be getting a negative. Yep. It's basically saying that the People tab window is not found. Okay. Well, if I load it again, let me go down to here and choose Load My CRM for Windows, and then run the test again. We get it. Okay. So now we have, we have put in the basic criteria so that we can find this window on the Windows desktop. But our use case that we've described earlier requires that we don't not only run it in any state that my CRM is in. Remember, my CRM can have any one of these tabs selected. But we want to run in two specific states. One, when the people tab is selected, we want to be able to attach to these fields. And second, when the company tab is selected, we want to attach to these fields. Let me go back to the people tab. So let's do the people tab first. 